Well, hi, quilty friends. Welcome back to my sewing room. And today I'm going to do a tutorial on the number nine hometown block. And this is what this is what number nine looks like. Okay, it's a really fun, easy plus block with easy corner triangles. And so I'm going to show you. Let me move this over. Leave this one here for a sample. Leave my little sewing pal over and I'll just show you some of the small ones. Now I have made 16 of these but some of them were on the design wall behind me so I'll just show you which ones I have here on my little on my little bitty design boards here. This is a really fun block to make and it only consists of three different prints and so it's easy to pull together. Okay, I, I don't know why, but I just have to pull these threads off when I see them. <laughs> and so, you know, you saw in the beginning of this series, my basket of my scraps that, um, you know, my scrappy cuts, I guess I should say. All right. So that's those for a minute. Let me set those up here. But let me pull these over before I show you the 10 inch blocks again. So this is the basket I'm talking about, right? That I have like one and a half inch squares, one and a half by two and a half, two inch squares, you know, two and a half inch squares, all those cuts that I told you about in the beginning of this series. And um, so it's so fun to be able to just pull these, you know, some pieces from that. And so that's what I've done for this. But let me show you the 10 inch block. I'm gonna talk to you about these in a minute too. But um. So this is what the 10 inch block looks like. So I give you the cutting for this in the video description. So it's just a bonus size and I'll be making a table runner out of these 10 inch blocks. And so let me just show you so far. I don't even think these are in order, but these are the ones that I've done the tutorial for so far. So there's going to be nine blocks here. Sewing all of these blocks in my hometown collection but because this is a Sew Your Stash series, of course you can just be using any collection or many collections together because you're just using your leftovers and your scrap bins. And that's what makes this really fun. Okay, so that's the last one that I've got to show you right now, but I'm going to go ahead and put this one back on top in case we need to refer back to that again. Now, before, um, well, let's get started on the block first, and then, and then I'll talk about what's on the design wall and those alternate blocks. Okay, so I'm gonna be sewing um, two blocks this time, and we're gonna be using the five and a half inch trim it ruler, and we're gonna be using the two and a half inch, okay, for those square squares in the corner. And the reason I'm doing two blocks at, a, at the same time is because I'm usually doing several blocks at the same time, and I usually just do one when I'm filming. But I thought it would be great to do two on this one because it's such a simple, quick, basic block that I can just go ahead and do two at one time and chain piece those. But normally I'd probably be doing four to six at a time. So what you're gonna need is, for the corners, you're gonna need four two and a half inch squares, and this is for the five inch size. And then you're gonna need four for the rectangles here, one and a half, by two and a half and then you're going to need a one and a half inch square for the center and then for the background you'll just grab from here four two and a half inch squares and that's all you need for the background of this block so since i'm doing two let me grab eight okay and so that's what I need for this block. And let me bring my machine in a little bit. That's one of the reasons I like to put my machines on a sewing mat is so that I can slide it back and forth for when I need a little bit more room here, if I'm cutting or trimming, or when I'm sewing or showing you things. And so that's, that's really um, useful to have this mat. And so I'm gonna be sewing with Miss Millie today. I don't even know if she's turned on there. Here we go. 
And this is Miss Millie, named after my grandma, Mildred. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these rectangles right here and we're going to sew, we're just going to take two of them. So two from each block, okay? And we're going to sew to the side using a quarter inch seam allowance of these two and a half inch squares. All right, so I'm just going to, oh, I thought I turned this on. Hang on, maybe I turned it off. Where's my switch? All right, hang on a minute. Okay, sorry about that, I'm back. We, uh, Miss Millie was not plugged in for some reason. I just switched her out and the plug wasn't in tight enough. So, okay. So I'm just using this line right here and doing a quarter inch seam allowance. And lining up my pieces. Again, if you're a pinner, go ahead and pin. I'm usually not a pinner unless they're large pieces. Okay, so. Now what I'm going to do, instead of using a scrap piece of fabric, I need to put that in my bowl somewhere. I'm going to go ahead and take this rectangle and sew this square to it. We're going to form, start forming this. And we'll just kind of use this piece as our scrap in between so I don't have to um, pull my threads out. And then I just cut between right here. And before I take it over to the pressing, I'm going to sew the other side. So I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to sew a two and a half inch square of background. You'll see what I mean by how fast this block is. Oops, almost grabbed the wrong square. Okay, now we've got the last one. Then I'm going to take this rectangle to end off. So this can be under the machine. And then just trim these apart. And then what we've got is these, this section right here without the easy corner triangles. We're just doing the top and bottom row. And then these little ones right here are just the middle rows. Okay, so now I'm going to take this over here. I'm going to grab my clappers. Oh, I forgot to put my big clappers up in the window to keep my curtains out of the way. So let's just grab two of them. Put it right there. And then... What I'm going to do with this is I like to set the seam and kind of squish them down. And what I mean by that is, see, you can see right here, you can see a seam that I set. See how nice and smooth that is because I pressed it. This one hasn't been set yet. So you can see that's kind of a little teeny bit, I don't know, not quite as flat is the best way to describe it. And so what I do with the iron is I set those seams so that I'm, pressing the bobbin thread and the top thread together to lie flatter. And then I just stir right here. Go ahead and open it up. I use my finger to kind of feel to make sure it's open all the way. And then I'll just roll it with my roller to make sure that is flat and out so I don't have any pleats in there. And then I can just press my iron on top. And as usual, I'm using my vintage iron and it's nice and hot. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing 
with this. And then while these are cooling under the clapper, we'll go back to those middle rows. Okay, I'll leave those to cool. So now I've got the middle row for this block. And so I'm going to put the other rectangle on the other side. And then I can trim this one back here and do the same thing. Add this rectangle to the other side. And then I can grab a piece of scrap fabric. Sometimes I just have those hanging around. <laughs> I've finished with my one and a half inch squares for my bonus quilting, so I need to move on to two and a half. So probably in the next video I'll have that set up. But you know, I have some down here that I could do if I needed to. Okay, I'm just going to set these seams real quick. And then that should be enough time for these to have cooled down. I'll just set these over here for a minute. And open these up. do a quick flat roll. I usually hold my iron down for about eight to ten seconds. Make sure it's nice and hot. Sometimes I'll put you know a couple clappers on there for weight. All right so I think what I'm going to do is I'll just I'll use this design board even though I don't have a larger one I think I can make it work. And lay these out like this, these two blocks. And I know that these blue ones were the corners for that one and these pink ones were the corners for that one, okay? And so I'm gonna come over here, grab these. These are cool enough. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and sew this together in a row like let me lay that one there so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm just going to sew that cross in there. Some people call it a cross. Some people call it a plus, a plus block. You know, it's kind of traditional either, either name, but it doesn't matter. Right now, it's hometown block number nine, right? That's what it is. Now, I just made these ends line up, and I didn't... You know, I didn't pin that middle, but when I said, I mean, I, okay, when I said I made the ends line up, I started at this end and ended at this end, but if I was worried about how they were going to match up, I could have pinned. So let me show you how I'm doing that in the next one. So I'll start out so that the, you know, that machine's holding that down to that point, and then I'll either take a double pin or two pins. I like to use a double pin and I just line that up. The seams are pressed open so you can really see how that is. And I'll just stick a pin on both sides of that seam allowance, okay? And then I'll just keep sewing. Get to that point and you can sew over them. Just go slower if you want. And then I just line it up on the next one and poke it in. And that way, if you're using double pins, they can't um, shift. Those seam allowances cannot shift apart from each other. And so it's going to stay lined up. So that's why I use those. You can use two pins if you want. But um, instead of using a scrap, I'm going to just pull a background. Two and a half inch square and a background print. Might as well be doing that bonus sewing, right? Okay, and then I'm going to open that up, make sure everything lined up, and I'm going to match that up again and do the other side. Okay. 
So I don't know if you've noticed because you watch me sew on several different featherweights, but each one of them has a different noise. Some are quieter, some are louder, and I noticed that Miss Millie is a little bit louder. Do you notice that, Cass? Mm -hmm. And I kind of like that. I kind of like that they all have their own personality. Okay, and so then I'm just going, going to make sure that that's lined up. And instead of a pin, I'll just hold my finger there. And same thing for that. Just hold it there and make it make it go under that machine how you want it to. And then we have to do Okay, I'm going to grab another background square. And another print square that are two and a half. And run that through. I'm getting closer to where I can show you my bonus quilt and what I'm doing with those one and a half and two and a half inch squares. But for right now, the ones I have sewn, I think I'll just put back in there. Okay, so now I'm gonna come over here and see what I mean by setting those seams. See how they're kind of a little bit, you know, just not quite flat. And so I will just set those seams first before I press. And that just helps flatten it out. And if I didn't do that, you can see that this side is flat because I set that seam, but this side is not. So this is going to be just a little bit shorter. And so I think it just helps to make your blocks accurate when you set your seams. And it just takes a second. And then I'm just going to use a separate clapper for each one. I'm gonna open those up. And then to make sure they're all the way open, and especially on these intersection seams, I like to press down and make sure that's nice and flat. And then I can come over here and just go top down on my iron. So I'm pressing my block and I'm not ironing it back and forth. I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna distort my block in any way. I wanna keep it nice and flat. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just put you know, one or two clappers there and then I'll do the same thing here you know probably one clapper is fine but because I am always doing several blocks at a time I have six of these eight inch clappers and so if I have them sitting here it's just as easy to stack them on top of each other because again I just think the extra weight might help absorb that heat faster or and or the block to remain flat once it's cooled flatter you know than maybe if it was a lightweight lighter weight clapper so okay so i'm just pressing that down i'm gonna hold it down for a few more seconds get that nice and hot and then put those on there and then while those are cooling i'm going to talk about um this 10 inch block and just about pressing the seams open and the easy corner triangles. So now of course you can see that these are half square triangles right here and I could have done those first but by doing them last see how the seam is much flatter right here how whoops, see how it's pressed open and the seam is much flatter. I've only got one two three four layers of fabric there in that seam now, if I had done these with half square triangles first, I would have had like the same amount of fabrics, but it would have been harder. This one, okay, how do I explain this? This seam right here would have been in between these two seams and it's harder to lay flatter. So this is the perfect block to show the method that I like to do when I can, when possible, is to form the half square triangles afterwards. Okay, and it just, I have just found over the years that that's so much easier. And so, you know, try it and see if you like that method or not. If, if, if you don't, then go ahead and make the half square triangles first and that's fine as well. But, um, you know, I just like to pass on my tips of what I've learned over time. And so we've got these blocks now. And, you know, I don't really think we're gonna use the two and a half inch trim it at this point. But, you know, we can after we add those, but that's not really gonna make any difference. 
but at this point you could lay the five and a half inch ruler right there and see if you've got to trim anything up before you add those easy corner triangles but here let me bring this a little closer is there a glare there no, you can good. kind of see that that looks fine okay that's exactly five and a half inches so we're good to go with that one and then I'm going to just pull this up here and do the same thing because I want to make sure that this is sized right before I add the easy corner triangles just to make sure I didn't do a weird seam allowance or something before I add those so that it's going to end up correct and so that looks good as well and so a lot of times I'm not using these to trim, only when I have to, I'm using them as a reference to measure and just to check my work each segment at a time to make sure, you know, that it's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so then what I'm going to do with this is just lay this down and line everything up right sides together. And I'm going to follow this center line and I'm going to start sewing right here in the corner. And then this is where I follow the center line right here. It comes up. just going to do these two at the same time so the only way I can make a mistake so watch me cast that I don't do that is to add the wrong color onto the wrong one. <laughs> so this one is correct so I just want to continue that and so what I'm doing usually when I'm doing two or four or six blocks at a time I'll just do the same easy corner triangle and I'll just keep trimming and running running them through like this starting in the corner and then lining up. And then I can trim this one off. <laughs> I need to move that or I'm going to do something I'm not supposed to with that one. Okay. And then I just make sure everything's lined up. I find it really helpful when I'm doing patchwork and especially easy corner triangles is to um, use my machine as a third hand. And what I mean by that is, see, I start right here in the corner. Now that's holding that down and that's exactly where it's supposed to be. So now I've got two hands that I can straighten this up and move this over to line up where I need to be without worrying about this slipping away. I'm sure many of you have discovered that as well, but again, doing YouTube tutorials is often a lot of repetitive tips. And, you know, I guess they could serve as reminders instead of saying they're just repetitive because, um, you know, sometimes I need a reminder on certain things. And so hopefully this helps you out. Let me know. Let me know if it's uh, too repetitive for you, if I just keep saying the same things. But, you know, it's like, this is how I do my blocks. So how can I really say anything different other than the cutting and maybe, you know, a different way to form them. But I do try to tell you the reasons that I'm doing these things in my method instead of just saying, this is, you know, this is how I do it and then not explaining why. So I hope that helps. Okay, let me grab another another background. So these are just a bunch of my B backgrounds that I'm using and and a bunch of my prints from different collections that are just left over from trimming off and things like that from my leftovers that I talk about in my series. Okay. So, looks to me like I've got the right colors. <laughs> on the block. So these are easy over here to set the seams because I can just go like that. Again, I'm still trying to press. I iron a little bit, but you know, I'm still trying to press as much as I can. And then I just go ahead and trim off my seam allowances. And it doesn't have to be an exact quarter of an inch, but I usually just let them I just sweep them up at the end or else let them fall on my knee. <laughs> to be honest, that's what I do. And because they're already sewn, 
You don't have to worry about trimming an exact quarter inch seam allowance. That time has passed, so that needs to happen. But you can also take your mat and a rotary cutter and trim these, but I've just always found it easier and faster for me to just grab my uh, larger sewing scissors here and just trim them off. And then if these are big enough, then I'll save them, but these are not big enough. They're smaller than one and a half inches. And so at one point you have to decide what you save and what you don't save and what you're really gonna use and what you're not. So, okay, so now I'm just going to open these up and these I do press towards the outer triangle. I don't see any need to press these open to save on bulk because um, this is going to lie flat already. And so I'm not too worried about that. So I just make sure it's nice and hot, get those on there and then do this one. Notice how I'm always do this direction away from me. I don't really like to do it towards me because I'm afraid I'm going to get a pleat in there. So I use the side of the iron. I don't like to use the tip and go like this because I could put a curve in that. And so I just find it easier to do that. Okay, so those blocks are done, but they're going to, we're gonna let them cool down so they can be nice and flat. And now I'm gonna talk about what you saw on the design wall. And I did say last time how I kind of changed my idea for my setting and what I was going to do. So these are just some of the leftover blocks that I have. But let me push this out of the way so I can talk about this. So what I decided to do was what you saw on my design wall, which is to use alternate blocks. Because I feel like that that is going to let each block shine a little bit more. And so I'm just going to set those up there real quick. And so what I'm doing is I'm just cutting them five and a half inches because that's what this block, you know, these all these blocks are is five and a half inches. So I'm just going to show you on this design board, four of them. Let me grab a different block. And I don't think there's going to be any rhyme or reason in how I'm setting them, but I'm just gonna be having different ones, maybe not the same ones next to each other or the same colors or anything like that. But I'm just going to be starting, this would be the top row. I'm gonna be starting and ending the top row with an alternate block. And then the next row would be starting with a pieced block and ending with a pieced block. And I'm just gonna keep going down. And um, and that's so that's my plan. So in my next video, I'm going to figure out the yardage and everything that you need for how much yardage you need for your alternate blocks. And I picked this print from hometown because I just thought it was kind of neutral. It was a medium tone and it has several colors in it. And I'm not gonna put any, any, um, borders on my quilt. Uh, this is just going to be it and then I'm going to bind it. And so I'll talk about that more in my next video yardage, exactly how many squares you need. But we are going to be doing, like I said before, 14 blocks, 14 different blocks, 16 each of those 14 blocks. Okay, so you can just continue doing that until the next video if you're going to be following exactly along with me and then I will have more information on that for you and okay so that's enough chat about that and again I just used my five and a half inch you know cutting ruler and just cut those you can get um 13 five and a half inch squares out of a width of fabric and so I'll I'll do all that quilty math and tell you about that okay so here we've got the 10 inch we're going to put up there and I'm going to grab a couple of these empty ones right here so I can put these over here. I always like to smooth those out. And then again, at this point, you can bring your ruler over here. And make sure that, you know, just to see if these grew any or if maybe they were cut a little bit larger than they were supposed to be or anything slipped by. Let me move this iron. So on this one, let me grab this little mat. On this one, what I'm seeing, I'll put it on the mat and make sure, but see how there's a little teeny corner and there's a little teeny seam right here. 
and I would just go ahead and trim that off. And you can use whichever side of the mat to, to see your fabric the best. So I'm just going to line that up on the mat and make sure it wasn't just the cush of the design board that did that. Okay, so I still see that. So see what I'm saying? So I'm just going to trim that right off. And I didn't see anything else on any other side, so that's that's good to go. This next one, maybe I'll turn the mat over so I can see it a little bit better. And you know, I I have a little bit. I have several size mats, so if this is a, was a bigger block, I would be using a bigger mat. But I'm just setting these here in the window with the light so that you can see, so Cass can get a top down. Okay, so I'm seeing this right here. I'm seeing this right here, just a little sliver. See how I can tell because I'm lining up these lines right here on these trim it rulers, all of these lines. Before I trim anything, I make sure that there's a line that's lined up. That one was just a little bit. Okay. And now that's good to go. All right, so I've got these cute number nine cross blocks or plus blocks, whatever you want to call them. And I think they're super cute. They're super fun. They're really easy, once again, to cut with your scraps. And you just have your little basket there. Again, yes, this is all one collection because I happen to be doing it with Hometown. But if you have, if you're doing it in a lot of different collections, just grab a basket and grab all those sizes that I talked about. Just grab a variety of each and throw in your basket and then you've got a basket to pull from. And so that's my tips on doing this block. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you in a couple days for the tutorial for Hometown Block 10. Thank you.